from the state that does not eat corn the long way. I'm Tyler. And I'm Cody. And this is the Edible Attitude Podcast. You know what's crazy? What's that, man? We've been friends for 25 years. 25 whole years, yeah. Give or take. Yeah. A few. Yeah. That's uh, that's a lifetime for some. Yeah. Just people who are just starting to sniff it. Yeah. That's a fully developed adult male. That's that's or female. Well, <laughs> we we found out that that's actually the age of thirty two, but we can save that for another day. We can save that for another day. It's all right, absolutely. we love you, ladies. Oh, absolutely, we love our ladies. You know, there's a time where we spent a lot of time together. I mean, yeah. we we grew up, you know, playing softball in our hometown, our town of two hundred people. Yeah, right around there. Give or take. Give or take. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. We uh we had a little ragtag group of us kids all around the same age that ran around playing sports and raising hell and getting into all sorts of shenanigans. Yeah, about five or six of us. Yeah, yeah. Some of us still talk to each other to this day. Yeah, I keep in contact with actually pretty much everybody. For the most part, yeah. For for the most of us, you know, a couple of us don't talk as much as we used to, but you'll have that in a small town. You'll have that. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. We uh we then went on to high school where we hung out a bunch. Middle school, not so much. You know, you were you were in private school. I was in public school. Yeah, and um, we still saw each other and hung out. You know, in town and stuff. But during the school year, not so much until high school. Right, high school we hung out quite a bit. Yeah, a lot. Especially playing video games together, late nights. Sports. Sports, yeah. that too. Sports and video games, yeah. Played football and wrestled. Wrestling and foosball, yeah, yeah. Your dad <laughs> was involved, right? He was the athletic trainer for football. And he was a coach. And a coach, yeah, yep. that's correct, yeah. Didn't coach me. I mean, he did, but he wasn't my position coach, you know? Right, he yes. Was, he was still definitely coaching me, though. Yeah, he followed me all throughout, uh, you know, starting in sixth grade mm-hmm. or fifth grade, one of the two. And, uh, you know, I went all the way up until I was a senior and then coached my brother until he was a senior. And shortly after that, he stopped. The perfect American dad, man. Yeah. How cool. He did a good job. With yeah. That. Yeah, he did. He did a good job with his kids. Great man. Stoically, amazingly great man. Stoically amazing. Shout That's out. a good way to describe Shout it. out to the, to the man himself. And then from there, we kind of lost touch. You graduated. You're a couple years older than I am. You graduated and went to college, right? Yep. Yeah, just for just for a year. And then I decided to not do that anymore and just work. Hey, the American dream, man. The American dream. <laughs> yeah. I, I just took too many classes, honestly. Yeah. And I just couldn't handle both. Yeah. So I really had to pick one or the other. So I just picked money over education. Money over debt. That, that too. Yeah. That's fair. That's a fair choice. Easy one to make a lot of times. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, I was still in school, obviously. And then I graduated and we were both obviously trying to figure out adult life at that point. Being young men growing up. Yeah, you went to the army and I went into another job. Another job. (laughs) Yep. Soldier boy and another job boy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. You go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We did that for a few years. I was in the army for about three years before I got uh, medically relieved from my duty there. And you were doing other jobs, right? Yep. Yeah. Different job at that time. Just kind of tradesmen, <laughs> just doing all sorts of different things or the same things. Well, I, I, I learned quite a bit of different things. I mean, I, I was a, uh, I worked as a, pizza delivery guy at a okay. company okay um i also then worked for a mom and pop shop for a little bit nice made pizza sandwiches it was really nice it was, it was like a new jersey take on it you know mm, okay sweet and then i stopped doing that and then i made pizza again oh snap. yeah i think we're on to something with you dog and then a grocery store, and uh, I met my wife there, but the girls always tell me that uh, mom found me at the store. Discount aisle. Discount aisle, <laughs> for sure. That's cool. You guys went at the grocery store? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, you know, just hit it off, and 
started hanging out and five years later here we are nice man yeah i actually met my wife um in high school i moved high schools my senior year um moved out of my dad's house and into my mother's house to a, a whole new school district and everything all new people um and ended up meeting my wife by around christmas time and 12 13 years later now two Dang. kids married for 10 years already Dang. yeah look at you what you know about that huh That's, yeah <laughs> <laughs> nah it's great though yeah i mean we got our happy little happy little family here and back in the hometown region so we were you know growing up and kind of learning life and doing our own thing and then you know we were separated at that time weren't really communicating hanging out anything right yeah and then we we linked back up how uh how did that come about well i think we met back up at a mutual uh hometown friends wedding yeah yeah that's right yeah. yeah, it was a wedding. I uh, went with another one of our childhood friends, too. Right. We, we we met up. We got invites and uh, all wanted to go see our childhood friend. And uh, we went there. And lo and behold, you were in the wedding. Yep. Yeah. I was the best man. The best man. The that's best right. Man. Yeah. yeah. We all relinked back up that night and kicked off chatting and hanging out again. Had a Had a blast that evening. Yeah, and then we found out that we lived like two miles from each other, some something like that. Yeah, yeah. As the crow flies, maybe we weren't too yeah, far away. Yeah, as the crow flies, absolutely. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was kind of crazy. So we decided to exchange numbers and, you know, hang out and see how it went. And I gotta say, man, it felt like nothing had changed. It just kind of kicked back off where we were. To me, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I uh, I was blown away and uh, very blessed. I gotta say, blessed that this friendship was able to rebud and flower, you might say, and be what it is today and where it's at. Yeah, no, I I definitely I definitely feel that way too, man. I mean, without you know, without your friendship, and we wouldn't be here. I can tell you that right now. And the fact that at the time, I think I was. I I just needed a friend, and you just showed up. You know what? I needed a friend too, man. I think it was just perfect timing for us both, and uh, it really was. You know, we've 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 seen our fair share of things, and in, in both of our lives since we've been back together as friends and yeah. homies, as you might say. And yeah, it's a uh, a lot of house moves for each one of us. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, yep. yeah, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I've helped as well. Yeah, you have. You yes, have, yes. Yes. And uh, yeah, I mean, it survived through 25 whole fucking years, man. How cool is that? It's 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 awesome. It's wild. It yeah. really is. Yeah, what a what a story of friendship. It should be a Hallmark movie. We're just... We should, we should probably... We're just not uh, going to kiss. I'm sorry. Well, I'm okay with that. <laughs> as, as long as it's not a Hallmark Christmas movie. <laughs> And yeah, the, I don't fuck with Christmas movies and unless the, it's and the mistletoe is not there, man. <laughs> yeah, we won't have to worry about it. And and, we uh, uh, got this great idea to start a podcast <laughs> yeah. together. Yeah, you know we we've spent too many countless late nights up talking about random things and ideas, and we want to experience and learn more about these things and more things. Because right. we're curious critters. We want to share it with the world, man. Just want to share. We just want to share. Just want to share it with the world. So that's 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 where we are. That's where we are. And this is our first podcast, recording of our first podcast. We have made a trailer, and that was the week prior. Yes. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. If you guys want to go check that out, we're pretty uh pretty proud of that. We put in some work. We put in good work, I think. Good work. Hard work. A lot of hours are getting put in. We're very excited to share this with everybody and hope to be able to create a community here where we can grow and learn together and share ideas and just have fun. Laugh. Have fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I was uh, cruising the internet 
okay. today. And I had read about this guy a while ago, but I didn't really delve any more into it until recently. You know who D.B. Cooper is? D.B. Cooper. See, that name sounds familiar. He's he's famous for something. He's famous. Something with money, right? Yes. Quite okay. a bit of money. Quite a bit of money. Quite a bit of money. So is he like he's... a banker? Is he what? Like a banker. A banker? Yeah, I don't know. No, like fucking uh, J.P. Morgan. I mean... D.B. Cooper, J.P. Morgan. <laughs> We're kind of on the same level here. I mean, the pictures definitely make him look like a... <laughs> jp morgan guy. <laughs> he's got a suit and everything whether that's an accurate picture i have no idea but that's what he looks like but no he's the most famous airline hijacker in history the most famous airline hijacker in history yeah so more stick with me here folks i'm sticking more than 9-11 hijackers well, wait a minute. No. Hold on a second. <laughs> no, hold on. Maybe the, the one that pulled off like a rob for mysteries for for mystery purposes. Because we yeah, we absolutely. know who did nine eleven. That's not a mystery. Yeah, everybody knows. Same page. Got it. All Same right. Page. So the most well known the mystery most... airline hijacking man. Right. Man was it a man? It was a man. Okay. He. Yeah, you said he. D- he. D- D- he B. Cooper. Cooper. <laughs> so he pulled off this hijacking mm-hmm. November 24th, 1971. That's almost around Turkey Day. Almost. It's getting there. 1971, you say? 1971. Okay, so this predates predates us. Right. Okay. By quite, Which, yeah, I mean, most things do. Let's be honest here. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot of things we're going to talk about predates us, honestly. Awesome. I love it. I love history. We're going back. Sick. Getting into stuff. Let's fucking do it. But yeah, he made off with about $200,000 in ransom, which is equivalent to about $1.3 million today. Damn! I mean, that's crazy. That's kind of awesome. It's like an air heist. Yeah, No, it it is, isn't it? So what? It's like some GTA shit. So he, he robbed a bank and hopped on a plane? Nah, man. It was for, like, he demanded it. Like, cause he told, uh, he told the flight attendant when he hijacked the plane that he had a bomb. Oh shit. Yeah. A bomb, like on him strapped on yeah. like yeah. suicide bomber. Yeah. Okay. Or Not like his strap or something. I don't strap know. to the, to the plane somewhere. Huh. Oh, that would have been crazy if you was strapped to the plane. Right. Like, he just walked out there beforehand when everybody's loading their packages. Right. Don't they say like C4 sticky, right? What if he just C4'd himself to the side of the plane? Just stuck it there. Knock, the knocking on the pilot's window. Give me the money! <laughs> hey, <laughs> two hundred thousand. Let's go. <laughs> trying to climb <laughs> yeah. the side in the window. Trying doesn't to even, cut the glass open. Doesn't even notice the door. <laughs> Just completely, completely bypasses it. Sticky bombs himself. Sticky bombs. Yeah. So it was. Uh, it was a Boeing, uh, seven twenty seven aircraft by Northwest Airlines. Okay. Yeah. Are they still in company? I've never heard of them. I don't think Northwest. Northwest Airlines? I know they're Southwest Airlines. Southwest, right. Did they merge? Did they change their names after this debacle because they were so embarrassed? I don't know. I'm not so going to hi- them. Right. So D.B. Cooper, the most infamous mystery airline hijacking man. That is a big title. That is a hell of a title. What, I mean, what other kind of title would a legend have other than a hell of a title? Right. You know? Yeah. It's got to be a hell of a title or no title at all. You don't deserve the thing. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it's got to stand Like, you got to do something wild to achieve that title. 100%. So this man, he hijacks a plane by claiming he has a bomb. Yes. No no verified proof of a bomb? Just allegedly had a bomb. Yeah, just just told the flight attendant they had a bomb. And they said, okay, Mr. DB, what do you need? What can we do for you? And he said, $200,000. And four parachutes. And four parachutes. And four parachutes. For him and the money, probably. Uh, I'm assuming. I don't know. Because 200000 in cash would probably be pretty heavy, I'd imagine. Maybe it was Especially one, parachuting. Maybe it was one parachute for each limb. He was just going to float somewhere. Oh, he's going to slow dive. I feel like that would hurt if you released them all at the same time because of that. 
Yeah, I feel the, like the parachutes opening. How, I don't think you could anyway. Like, how are you gonna reach them all? No idea. Especially once one pops and then two pops. What do you pop first? Your feet? Wouldn't that just take you hanging upside down then? And yeah, and then you got it. Then you got to do a sit up. Or no, because they're pulled. You just got to pull your arms up, right? You're hanging upside down. You just got to pull your arms. But that one, that one yanks back. Yeah. Right. So that'd be a. Wild. And then you're like. I wish we had camera right now so I could demonstrate this action for everybody because it looks really dumb. <laughs> it it wouldn't look good. So anyway, DB Cooper, he gets his money, and then what? So gets his shoots. Gets his parachutes, yep. He had all these passengers, like as hostages. Right. And when he went to refuel, mm-hmm. he let them go. Odd choice, but he still has the crew, right? I'm guessing. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So yeah, that's so, fair. So some of the flight attendants left. Mm-hmm. Just essential. Right. So like the pilots stayed. Two some, pilots and a couple crew. Some flight attendants stayed. Yeah. And probably just the pretty ones. Probably. <laughs> I mean, he he's he's, he's stopped, probably very chauvin- he, uh, not chauvinistic, but no, he pro- probably wasn't trying to be. He thinks he is. He thinks he's trying yeah, to be. Yeah. Well, you got to if you're wearing a suit. Right. With 200K in your in your pockets. And four parachutes. And a plane. And a plane. Yeah. <laughs> well, the whole thing about D.B. Cooper is that he's never been you know, found or identified about who it was. No one. I mean, there's been people that have said on their deathbed, like, hey, I'm D.B. Cooper just a last second claim to fame like, right i'm guessing yeah. but there's been multiple people that have done that so who knows? Right. the same goes with jack the ripper people have done that too and we still don't know right so there's there's just no they had to have had a sketch of the guy right yeah they did a couple but of there's them. there's nothing to verifiably link no noticeable marks did they ever find the money uh there was a story that they like a were they tracing was, bills at that point I they were all by the 70s they should have been they were all like in circulation was, in the same yeah it was it was pulled from straight from the press probably right and uh, a bag of it was found by like a like a kid like an eight-year-old kid and his parents and they tried to track the rest of it and try to find it, but they couldn't mm-hmm. find the rest of it. Mm. But they don't know for a fact that if it was one of his parachutes or not. So it was just speculation at this point. It still is. Crazy. So this man, he either could have jumped and landed and just cruised on off, or he could have crashed and burned. What was... a uh... The condition, the weather conditions, like when he jumped, was it, was it cool as cucumbers or was it like sketchy? Where were they flying at? They refueled the aircraft in Mexico City, and another stop in Reno, Nevada. Okay. And about thirty minutes after that, after taking off from Seattle, from Seattle at this point, okay. After the passengers were all released in Seattle after he landed. So he refueled multiple times before releasing the passengers. Yes. And then his final descent was probably from Seattle. Okay. So about 30 minutes after taking off from Seattle, uh huh. he opened the aircraft's door, like aft door, the back yep, door. Yep. And deployed the staircase. Like there's a like mm-hmm. a, that inflatable staircase or whatever okay. it is, and parachuted somewhere over southwestern Washington. Southwestern Washington. A lot of woods there. Yeah. Thick woods. That's Bigfoot country. Do you think he had an in with the Bigfoots and was like, hey, I'm going to get some cashola. I'm going to drop here in your general area. Come pick me up. I mean... We're going to get some fucking popcorn. We're going to get some movies. We're going to hang out. We're going to be cool about it. It's not out of the question because he's never been found, so we don't know. So maybe he is still hanging. You know what's ne- what else has never been found? Oh, God, what? Bigfoot. Bigfoot, yeah. Bigfoot's never been found. D.B. Cooper's never been found. Washington, 
Woods, it's all tying together, dude. I think we're it's figuring all it out. Link, we we figured it out. First episode, case debunked. <laughs> case dismissed. We're done. We're on to some here, folks. Let's let's get it. Let's get a crew on this and figure it out. We need a a name for some sort of organization or task force to help us investigate these issues and come up with some more conclusions. Did you mean the FBI? No. I meant Edible Attitude Podcast. We are our own entity. We do not need the government interfering with this. Because we have questions about them, too. That's true. That's true. Very curious things to do with them. (laughs) Very curious. (laughs) It's all up for question. So, Seattle. Do we know the weather conditions yet? It was clear skies. There was nothing, nothing crazy going on. It was about 5.30-ish. I mean, what uh, time did he jump? Did he jump broad day? I'm guessing night. That would be the smart thing. I'm thinking 5 p.m., 5.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah. So bright as fuck, I'll probably wait November. So it would be dark. Or getting would dark. would be getting dark. Yeah. Hmm. Bigfoot, getting dark. Woods, Woods. <laughs> Washington, TV Cooper. It's all coming together. It's all there. We're sure it was clear though. He it wasn't like he didn't escape through some clouds or some. You know they didn't lose him once he hopped out of the plane. He just uh, I mean they didn't he, watch him go down for a while. You know why I, didn't they circle back and just watch him if he if it was clear out? Why didn't they just follow him? Well, because they just been hijacked with a dude with a bomb. Right. Who's got four pairs of shoes and about $200,000. Right. So stay 100 feet above the guy. Right. And just keep circling or making passes at a good distance and watching him go down and see what happens. Close the fucking door. Take a drink of water. Focus. And catch this bastard who just hijacked your fucking plane and s- screwed up your day. Where are you going to land in Washington, in the woods. You just refueled in Seattle. Did they? Did he run them dry? No. He didn't so what's the fucking excuse? See, I mean, I, I there's think they, no excuse for this guy not to have been found. But what if they just ran out of parachutes though, and they couldn't jump? Why do they need to jump from their perfectly operating plane? Because it would take a long time to land said plane. You don't right? need to land it. You need to see the general coordinates of where he landed. But if he's if it's dark, if and, it's getting dark, and how long or does it take to get hear out me there? out? Mm, okay, maybe not a great idea. I was gonna say, chop a chop a with the with the helicopter, just, <laughs> just going through. Just there. take the fucking blades to the guy and chop him up. So, well, Probably mean, not good to just crash into things with a with a plane either, or or helicopters, anything in the air. Anything in general is not a great idea to crash into, I guess. Yeah, trees would be a bad thing. That would be... Paul Walker didn't like it. Or no, that was a... Oh, my God. Was that a tree? Yeah, it was a tree. It was a tree, wasn't it? Jeez. (laughs) So sorry, people. Sorry, guys. There's going to be dark jokes on here. I am from the... I mean, I was in the military and just childhood trauma. It's how I find humor in life. Mm. Welcome to the shit show, folks. (laughs) Welcome to the shit show. What else do we know about D.B. Cooper? Did he have a family? Does it? And nobody knows anything about this guy. Yeah, no one knows nothing. Like, he didn't have a life before the plane that they... No, they, I mean, they found, like, over 60 fingerprints hmm. of this guy, but they couldn't trace it back to anybody. Yeah, that was right around when they were really getting into um, CSI, you might say, crime scene investigation stuff. Really doing, like, fingerprint and... DNA analysis, those kinds of things around that era. The weird thing is, is that when he told the flight attendant that he had a bomb, he handed her a piece of paper. Okay. As to not to alert, you know, everybody else, which right. is smart. You don't want to create chaos. Mm-hmm. But the writing was very neat. It was written with a felt tip pen. Oh, shit. Fancy. So he knew what he was doing. Right. I mean, he seemed uh, educated, people would describe him. 
Well, I don't think any bozo is going to try and go hack a, you know, hijack a plane. You got to be pretty bold and intelligent to try and pull that off. You'd be smart enough to figure out that that is not, in fact, a good idea. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's got to have some... Bo- there's There's got to be, like, an underlying reason, you know, as to why he wanted to do it. But he didn't really talk to anybody on the plane, so no one knew. And cell phones weren't a thing back then. So it's not like he was texting anybody. Right. My question is, why would you want to destroy... Why would you want to not destroy, but vanish with... A million dollars, because we'll just say in today's terms, a million dollars in the woods with Bigfoot in Washington. Why wouldn't you take that plane to like the Caribbean to like and then jump out there? You know, yeah. Jump into uh somewhere tropical, get a pina colada. Just chill. Yeah, dude. I mean he'd he'd get found if they circled back around, looked down and they're like, Oh, it's that island. Right. Okay, fair. Okay, I didn't think that one through. There's a lot of physical evidence pointing to who it may or may not be. Yeah, do we have any suspects, like key prime suspects? We have some. We have a few, yeah. Some guy named Ted. Ted. You know, I, I mean, the whole, the, the suspects, they were interviewed between 1971 and 2016, which, which is relatively recently, and they processed more than a thousand people who were serious suspects. These 1,000 are... serious suspects? Yeah, that's what they that's had, I guess. That's crazy, man. Right? But they couldn't pin it on anybody. I don't know what's crazier. They couldn't pick someone to fucking just stick it to? Yeah, but the serious suspects include people that, you know, wanted to, pub- were public seekers, you know, attention mm. grabbers. Well, scene sluts. Scene sluts. Yeah. That's a good name for them. Yeah. If you're enjoying this topic and would like to talk more about it, you can find us at Edible Attitude or at Edible Attitude Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. So now that we've covered kind of the base of the D.B. Cooper story, what about the suspects? Well, there's quite a few of them. And like I said before, there's more than a thousand serious suspects that the FBI had processed. One of them is a man named Ted. I'm just going to call him Ted. A man named Ted. A man so named Ted. Ted might be DB. He might, might be, be JP Morgan himself. J- <laughs> JP Morgan <laughs> call back. coming out. Ted was a special forces uh, commando during the Vietnam War, and he was a master skydiver, so that's why he mm. was a suspect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and a convicted felon. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, I mean... He's got everything going for him. It's a military standard. It, yeah, it's got to be. No, come on. We love him. So, super, super parachuter, airborne. Yeah. And uh, did he look look like the sketch? I mean, his picture kind of kind of looks like him, yeah. Okay, kind of, though. It doesn't seem very, very affirmative. I mean, there's a couple pictures of some people that they all look like him, which mm. is weird a lot of doppelgangers for this guy is that what what we're hearing sounds like it or people just saw somebody and they're like hey that guy looks familiar type mm-hmm. thing let's sketch him out was he of european descent is he a white guy is he a white dude i yeah. mean i i don't know the picture is not very clear so i couldn't tell you from characteristics you can usually kind of tell he's kind of white he has a white name well ted Ted, I meant DB, the sketch. Oh, the sketch? Yeah, he just looks like a white dude in a suit. So, yeah, so we're lo- we're looking for for a Caucasian male, right? Just so white dude all in these a guys suit. are probably Caucasians. Yep. Okay. So that makes sense why there's so many doppelgangers. White people are so fucking basic. So <laughs> basic? Bitches. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. It's okay. Yes, we are. The biggest thing about him is that all of his features, all of Ted's features, mm-hmm are in line with the descriptions of Cooper. His age, what he looked like, mm-hmm, how he right. dressed. Okay. So height, weight. Yeah. You got any of those things, you know? Around like the a, same same Guessing he wasn't like a big build. man. He's probably a slender six foot average average doppelganger man. I mean he was about average height, which is, you know, five eight. Five ten. Five eight is average height? I mean six foot is not average height. It's not? No. I thought that was like the average male height. No, you're just real big. 
Yeah, but still, I thought, you know, because look at the NBA, man. Look at all those basketball players in general. They're all big as shit. Because that's basketball. Well, same with football players. Football? They're all big as shit. Yeah, but basketball, especially like small basketball players, sometimes are like 6'4", you know? Like oh, point guard. Know point guards, the small guys in the starting five are 6'4". What about mugs? Mugs look well, Yeah, I mean, and... you got your exceptions of smaller guys. There's definitely plenty of guys smaller than 6'4", but like 6'2 to 6'4 for a point guard is pretty standard. And that's a small guy in the team. The next suspect, his name is uh, Richard McCoy. Dick McCoy. Dick Jr. D, what's his middle name? D.B. Cooper. No, but... Dick McCoy. No idea. Sure Dick look more Mark into it. McCoy. No, B. We're looking for a B. Keep going. Keep going. What about what do we got about McCoy? What do we got about McCoy? Let's see. Uh, he was an Army vet also. So they're really also, hating on the military guys because yeah, of the skydiving, probably. Makes yeah. sense. Okay. He's also a demolitions expert, though. Oh, with the bombs. And okay. a helicopter pilot and a recreational skydiver. Okay. These things make sense as to the tributes of D.B. Cooper. Yeah. And he looks like him, too. Yes. Yes, he hmm. does. But they could never stick anything on this guy, either. I mean, if they don't ever, like, have a large sum of money that they're spending or using or that they can trace at the time, because their tracing probably wasn't great without computers. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be hard to point fingers at anybody, I guess. What else about this information that we have? So he was arrested on April 9th with a ransom of cash in his possession. A ransom of cash in his possession. What does yeah. that mean? A ransom of cash... So he, so he ransomed it from like a bank, maybe, like oh. like the two hundred thousand that DB made off with, okay. a ransom, right? Because well, they know the bills that they gave DB Cooper, right? Because they found the one bag and they verified that those, in fact, were the bills, right? He uh, he demanded also four parachutes, convenient, and five hundred thousand dollars, upping the game. Ooh. So did he learn from DB, or is he DB upping his level? Sounds like a copycat. Copycat? Sounds like there was a lot of copycats at the time, no? Well, everybody wanted that spotlight. Th what was that fun fact you had said? So in 1972, there were 31 hijackings committed in the U.S. airspace. Holy shit. 19 of them were specifically for extorting money. 15 of the 19 extortion cases, all the hijackers also demanded parachutes. So D.B. Cooper did it in 1971, November 1971, setting the trend for all these hijackings in 1972. Yeah, at least 15 of them were copycats, or tried to be anyway. Well, 19 of them because they were all just wanted money. Money, 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 money. But what's crazy is that in 1973, there's only two hijackings that take place. Only two? What changed? Did they up security at the airports, maybe? Or the airplanes? Or, like, what happened? Oh, they had to have. Is that when, um, what are those guys that fly on planes? Uh, marshals? U.S. Marshals? Oh, maybe. When are the U.S. Marshals coming to town? No, they've been around longer than that, I'm sure. Well, the next year in 1973... The FAA began requiring uh, all airlines to search all passengers in their bags. Unfortunately, that created a bunch of lawsuits that violated the Fourth Amendment protections against people, against the search and seizure in federal courts. And they, the federal courts ruled that they were acceptable when they limited the search to weapons and explosives. And now what is that list? So many fucking restrictions of what you can bring on a plane. Oh, yeah. Which is fair. It's fine. Safety, you know. I mean, we I tried to it. bring a, a hole punch on a plane in my bag for medical purposes. I know that sounds weird, but I'll explain later in another one. Hell, yeah. But I brought a hole punch, and they made me rip up open my bag. Because they thought it looked like a handle of something. Ah, uh, yes. And so I showed it to them, and I'm like, it was just a hole punch. And they're like, oh, okay. And then when I came back from yeah. my trip, uh -huh. they didn't <laughs> search it. Weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. They probably just had you on file as hole punch guy. Hole punch guy, yeah. yeah. 
I'm I'm still on file. Look me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll be you're on file forever. The FBI, everybody is the whole punch guy. <laughs> I can't get away. <laughs> Life long name and file. The two hijackings that were attempted in 1973. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the hijackers tried to crash the airliner that he was flying into the White House to kill President Nixon. Should have tried harder. Should have just kidding. Cry. That's terrible. I don't wish death upon most don't people. Do that. Don't do that, folks. Don't That's not that. nice. Take a step back. Take a joke. It's, you know, it's not a dick. Don't take it so hard. It's not a dick. Don't take it so hard. <laughs> Anybody else interesting? There is this guy. We're going to call this guy Sherry as a nickname. Sherry. Okay. Sherry. Yep. He served in the Marine Corps. Marine Corps Sherry. During World War II. World War II. And was later Mm -hmm. employed as an editor, like a tech editor. Right. At Boeing. Oh, snap. In Seattle. In Seattle. So he had the the ends. Right. Maybe he had help at the airport. Maybe he had his crew in the plane and that's why they didn't follow him. Oh, maybe. Maybe. That's possible. Maybe he gave him a cut. His picture looks oddly similar to the sketch of D.B. Cooper. Oh. And he was a similar appearance and age around Cooper's description. What was the the description of the age? Like 40s? 44. Okay. Yeah. That was just a guess. I'm glad I hit it. Just seems like the appropriate age a man would do something. Midlife crisis type type of move would be hijacking a plane for cash, I feel like. It's not really a young man's game. Maybe if you're bold, you know, bold young man, but I feel like it's more of a midlife crisis. I got to fucking, I'm in debt, or I got kids I got to send to school, or I got a wife who needs new tits, something. Or you just, you're just you just an adrenaline junkie and you just yeah, live for the thrill. Who knows? I mean, you never, you really never know. Right. So Sherry. Sherry was the airport man. There's also Bob. I'm just going to call him Bob. Okay, Bob. Uh, he was a retired pilot and ex-convict mm, mm-hmm. who served on an army helicopter crew mm. and some other units during the Vietnam War also. Well, shit. A lot of military folks. Yeah. Looks like they all... Which, looping back to the parachuting, it, it adds up. At that time, especially, I don't know how much commercial, recreational skydiving there really was you know, compared to tactical environments, obviously. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. We got a William. William. He was a suspect, and it was conducted Mm -hmm. by an Army data analysis who sent the findings of these, you know, this guy, to the FBI somewhere in the middle of 2018. Hmm. Uh, Will was a World War II veteran. Okay. He also enlisted in the Navy right out of high school and volunteered for combat air crew training. Okay. Sounds like we're on to something. He was also affected by the Penn Central Transportation Company's bankruptcy in 1970, which was at that time the largest bankruptcy in U.S. history. So he lost all his money and it was in dire need of more. Yeah. He really needed to uh, up his game, I guess. Well, oh, well. (laughs) Well, Will you believe you're intriguing me? Will's naval aviation experience gave him knowledge of planes and parachutes. And there's also reason to believe that he worked for the railroad at some point. And his experience would have helped him into finding railroad tracks. So that makes sense if there's railroads out in Washington. Which I'm sure there probably is, especially out in, you know, they were spanning all over for a long time, right? That's what our main transport of goods was, was, was trains. So that, I mean, that is all adding up. This guy, for me, is suspect number one of most interesting I mean, it just sounds like he just sent it right into the Sasquatch-infested Washington wilderness to hop on a train and just get gone. Right. 
but he he's the first one we've really discussed that has motive for wanting the cash. The rest of them are just kind of, yeah, it kind of looks like um has some skills and abilities. But William, actually with the bankruptcy, has the motive of needing that money. I'm kind of keyed in on William. Well, let's keep going Will I on. am hijacking a plane, getting that money. Getting that money. Will I am going to live with Sasquatch and disappear and live in fame. On the uh, railroad website mm -hmm. that uh, the railroad that he worked for. So this is, you know, when internet became a thing. Okay. Uh, the website showed a resemblance, a remarkable resemblance between Will and D.B. Cooper. Oh, no. Right. Aha. Uh -huh. And... And? The FBI did not comment on any tips about Will, even though he seems like prime suspect. They mm. just didn't seem involved. Have they him. just given up? They might have just been. Everything's just a hoax now, and they're just guessing. There's just too much information that it's been flooded with misinformation, causing them to give up. It's not not important anymore, especially with all the copycat. Correct. All the claims. Right. You know how much time and resources they'd have to spend on it? Is it really worth it at this point? For a low sum of $1 million. <laughs> For a low sum <laughs> of $1 million. Right. In today's, today's world? I mean, it seems to me, honestly, I don't think anybody's going to figure out whatever happened to D.B. Cooper, but I'd like to hear some of your thoughts. What, what, what do you think happened? Like, from, from the point... That he got on said plane and was like, look, I got a bomb in my pocket. I need money and four parachutes and I'm getting out of Dodge. Like, what do you think happened? What do you what do you think went through everybody's brain? Through everybody's brain? Especially, you know, the... I think what went through the crew. What is another name for that crew? The, the well, flight, attendant. flight attendant. That's the word I'm looking for. I think what went through the flight attendant's pants was probably piss. Yeah. Once once that note was received. That just, was probably, just a little dribble. Probably a knee jerk reaction. Right. Just a little tinkle of oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. What are we gonna do? D B himself was cool, calm and collected. It sounded like through this whole thing he was really planned out, took deep breaths, stayed hydrated for the whole event, and really pushed on with his mission and succeeded. The pilots, they they did their jobs. They stayed cool and calm and flew the plane and kept everybody safe from the sounds of it. I don't I didn't hear anybody get hurt in this whole thing. So shout out to you, D B for being a good guy and you know, not hurting anybody unnecessarily, just getting your getting your bag and getting out of Dodge, man. That's cool. Uh congratulations, you did it. You won the game. Uh nobody's found you and you're living on an in infamy. As far as when went through everybody else's heads, they're just happy to be there, happy to be alive, witnessed the event, and lived to tell the tale, I think. Well, D.B. Cooper would be about 80 or 90 years old by Dude, now. Dude, he could still be breathing. It's true. He could I still bet be he is. There. I bet he's he's still living with Squatch. He never beef know. Beef jerky in the woods. Beef jerky with yeah, Squatch. venison jerky God, in the woods. those are good commercials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> classics i think they still have them from time to time messing with squatch messing with squatch mm -hmm. they got soap now what sasquatch soap oh mr squatch yeah or, yeah that. something like dr squatch yeah is yeah. that what it is i don't Squatchinator? know i don't know i don't, know, I don't know if like a sasquatch runs that company or like donates. You know, I bet who runs that company? DB Cooper. DB Cooper. Hey, you never know. Company. Oh, maybe he probably used the money the from the plane to fund the soap. That was his dream. Yeah, he's he wanted to start a soap company. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, in Washington, he's got the Bigfoot working for him out in the woods. It's all natural, and he's building an empire. Oh, there you and go. Keeping him safe. It's a win-win for all of them. Dude, can you believe that? No, I can't, what? but that sounds wild. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody should make this a movie. Kind of like Cocaine Bear. I'm glad that became a movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, we got to see it. Uh, I've heard so many good things about that. I heard it's great. 
What do you feel happened during this whole D.B. Cooper debacle? I think he just did his thing, had a plan, didn't want to hurt anybody in the process, just wanted money to get the heck out of there. Probably to rebuild, maybe not. I don't know. But even with even with the evidence they have, they still haven't, there's nothing. Like, they still haven't found anybody. So when... If it ever happens, if they ever connect any dots whatsoever, they'd have to have some different CSI technology to try to figure out what happened. To time to, travel? Maybe. They need time travel. Well, yeah. Like, what's that thing in, in uh, Harry Potter, the, the pensive? The time turner? No. Sure. That would help, too. Yeah. But I'm talking about the pensive, where you can view memories. Oh, yeah. Get one of the people who was on the plane in there, pull that, extract that memory, see it firsthand who it is, see if the ske- sketch even lines up. So that's not even... Because maybe it was that guy, the, the the big guy at the the airline, right? He uh, he was like CEO or something, you're saying, one of the suspects. He was a big wig at uh, an airline. Yeah. And maybe that was his crew, right? He was in, out of Seattle. That's where they refueled and last left off. Maybe it was his crew who were the last ones to see him and give a sketch. Maybe they're the ones who gave the sketch and threw the sketch off. And it wasn't even close to who it was. Oh, that's a good thought. That's a good. That's a great thought. It might have happened. That's, I mean, was that William or was that Bob? I don't remember. So maybe it was his crew, threw the sketch off coast is clear super super far like no one's ever gonna get close yeah he was just good to go i still think it's will will sounds very convincing yeah was that will though i think that was will wasn't it no 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 it was not unfortunate unfortunate i don't remember why will so convincing anymore you don't remember I think why he's number so two now. <laughs> he's number two. <laughs> I like my theory a lot. <laughs> hmm. So we've got crew throws off the drawing, making soap with Bigfoot, or perished on the way down. Or perished on the way down. We probably will never know. We'll never know. But thanks for stopping in, everybody. Thanks for coming by, listening. Thank you for being here love to have you i think that'll do it for this uh first episode and uh love you guys appreciate you coming love you so much thank you